The year is 1353. A plague has ravaged the British Isles, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Untold millions went to an early grave, and those left standing were plunged into poverty, brutally scarred by the horrors that they had witnessed. Nothing would ever be the same again. As the cold retreated, heralding spring, Jonathan, Edith, and Lelion set about finding a new home. But these three were not your normal settlers. They came together realizing they shared a similar taste, a taste for a particular kind of flesh, that of humans. It was the consumption of blood and the flesh of their kin that allowed them to survive the plague. Now, believing themselves to be more than human, good land is there for the taking in all four corners of this once mighty land. Citizens are rebuilding in the hope that the horrors of the past few years can be left behind. It's possible that there will be fighting, drought, sickness, hunger, or what of it. Life goes on, says Edith, and so must we. After walking for an eternity, the pure, swift running streams and clean air of the mountain ridge stole Lenion's breath away. And just beneath the surface, minerals glimmered, rich with promise. The travelers knew that this was the place that they had been searching for. They decided to call it Hexham. Kia ora, legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome to Going Medieval, and to the cannibal keep known as Hexham, a keep that will be dug deep into this mountain here. This is our map. This is what we're working with. It is a large map. The map seed is Rikon, if you're wanting to try it out for yourself. And as you can see, we have our three settlers here. And our first settler here is Edith Danvers, 37 years of age, and with some interesting perks here. Bloodlust, which allows her to, you know, be roused by the prospect of violent slaughter. Fitting. She's also ruthless, extremely candid, and doesn't suffer fools gladly. And finally, cannibal. Now, cannibal is the only trait that I've actually added to these colonists. Everything else is all purely random. Secondly, we have Jonathan Withers here, 27 years of age. He is a gobbler. The only way to preserve food is to eat it quickly. At least that's what Jonathan thinks. He's also known as the Ghost of Erith. Jonathan was pale and silent. He loitered in dark alcoves, spoke seldom, and often appeared out of nowhere. Interesting. And finally, we have Lelion Bevent, 23 years of age, known as the Bone Setter of Cumdivik. Wonderful. And she has the most perks out of everyone here. Bloodlust, similar to Edith, of course. Congenial, out of sight, out of mind. That is Lillian's motto. She doesn't worry about things beyond her control. Potentially useful. She's industrious, certainly a busy bee, buzzing around getting things done from dawn till dusk. She never seems to rest. Excellent, and then disfigured. Oh boy, after the fire, Lillian did not really have a face, but she had a purpose. Of course. And so, those are our three. We didn't really talk about their skills here. So, having a look on the side, Edith has a passion for melee, smithing, and speechcraft. But right now, she is going to be our miner. She's going to be very busy chipping away at this wall here to get us deep within the mountain. In actual fact, we're probably going to stop her from working on some of this and just focus on a single pathway for now. We're going to tidy it up, make it look really nice eventually, but for now, we need to get in there as soon as possible. For the time being though, Jonathan is helping us out with his construction skill, which is one of his highest. However, he's not passionate for it. What he's really passionate about is cooking human beings. So we'll see if he can get to that eventually. He's also going to be our archer, whereas Edith and Lillian are both going to be melee fighters for us. So Jonathan is going to be very busy uh, erecting this temporary shack for us. We're going to be storing some of our things under here so that they are out of the elements. And we're going to build some basic beds in here too. Finally, in terms of skills, Lillian over here is going to be our 
medic. She was a bone setter, and so makes sense that we're going to use her to do that. It does also look like she's going to be able to break some bones. Her melee skill isn't super high yet, but it will get there eventually. And so, as you might be able to tell, it's a little bit of a distance that they have to travel from where we started, which is where all of our resources are at the moment. And we really don't want them to be just hanging out here. We've got books, we've got scrolls, we've got ale. All the stuff needs to get moved, and it's pretty much going to be on Lillian to haul all of that stuff there. We also do have two goats, Luna and Pesky. We'll see if we can keep them around. Now, we can eat animal flesh and berries and whatnot, but these three prefer, well, you know. So having a look at what Edith is working on here, we've got our three rooms. This is going to be something of a entry hall. We are going to be working on elevating it. So the idea being we can stand on the top levels and shoot down at the unfortunate foes who walk in here. This is going to be our main kind of entrance dining hall kitchen over here with three rooms and off towards the side that's where we're going to start building industry workshops and everything else but yeah we are going to be living within the mountain cannibal keep here in hexham is going to be nice and safe hidden away but of course this level of construction is going to take a while we're already at 5 p.m on our first day here it would be fantastic if we could get the rest of this done in time but i suppose we will see whether or not Jonathan is going to be able to get that done. Well, it looks like we are going to be close. It's probably going to be the hay that we're lacking at the end of the day. But we can, <laughs> we can certainly hope, can't we, Jonathan? Ah, look at that. We at least have a room. We don't have a roof yet, but we're getting there. Well, nine o'clock on the first day. I am going to be surprised if we get it all done. It looks like we might at least get some of the roof put in place. Ah, oh, no, all of it in actual fact. Well, it's got to be down to the wire for Jonathan. Grab that hay, head back and see if you can make some beds, my lad. Unfortunately for Edith and Lillian, they're going to be sleeping a little rough, at least for the time being. It's the dawn of day two. We'll be finishing off our temporary shack today and hopefully actually getting a little bit further into the mountain. There we go. A bedroom. Not much of one, but <laughs> enough for now. So now that their construction is complete, Jonathan is going to be able to help hauling some of the last resources that we still have in our initial stockpile over to here. We're going to get in our first little bit of defense, just a wooden door back here before it opens out into the wider area. And we are going to allow Edith to dig this whole area out because this is the starting basic layout for our home. Not that I'm convinced we really need it yet. We are going to put down a campfire and a butcher's table outside so they're not going to be working as efficiently but this is temporary while we are um, well still out here jonathan's going to be able to put that together quick fast for those we're going to just set it up for 10 meals to be cooked and over here we are going to butcher forever as long as we have something to butcher and at the end of day two our three settlers actually have somewhere to sleep nice and sound we have our two goats over here now as well and they seem to be perfectly happy scavenging for themselves out here. Look at that, a happy start to the day. We can always check in on their mood and see how we're looking. Slept in shared quarters. I mean, nice, safe and cozy. Slightly hungry and depraved of entertainment and religious activities. Well, that's not so good, but that's stuff that's luxury. It'll come later. Ah, now that Lelion is doing some mining over here, it means that we've actually got everything hauled over here, which is excellent to see. With the two of them working in here, we should stand a much better chance at getting in there sooner rather than later. Lillian does actually have a passion for mining, so I hope to put that to good use. Another thing to consider is that we are actually getting a lot of resources from doing this as well. A lot of limestone that we're going to be able to use to, uh, well, pop down for flooring and other bits of construction. Meanwhile, we've got Jonathan chopping up some of the corpses that he's found around here. Unfortunately, not human corpses, but what can you do? For now, he is just cooking up what he can. And so really, with all of our food that we have out here, we want to try and get that into a cellar as quickly as possible. And actually, keeping that in mind, we might want to just keep the bedrooms separate for now. We'll work on that once we've got all those basics done. This little shack out here will suit them well enough for now. Excellent, we are in. We're gonna chuck down another door there. Jonathan was helping us out for a little bit there. And we'll actually have a look at chucking down some flooring. So if we're in here, we are going to be going for limestone flooring. This is going to be our 
trap hall. We don't really need to worry about putting down traps yet. Don't get me wrong, we will have raiders, but they're still a little ways off. And that is the end of day three. Well, we have our first event here, a friendly visit. A rangy hawker empties their pack, spreading a selection of oddments on a linen cloth on the ground. I buy and sell things that take me fancy on the road. They say with a crooked smile, take a look if you like. Well, I'm sure for this merchant here, Walt Rowan, that normally he'd be welcomed with open arms to any settlement. However, this is Hexham, and Walt is, well, a walking meal. Now, we do need to take one thing into account. If we attack Walt, we will be angering whatever settlement he came from. But it's a wild world, and angering another settlement, well, that just means more food coming our way. Hey, it will take him quite a while to navigate over towards our home though, so let's not worry about him for the time being. And look at these three go, slowly but surely chipping out our home. You know what, because our food might be out here for a little bit longer, it might be worth just chucking down a wooden floor just so it decays a little less faster. So that's on Jonathan to quickly put together. Oh, and would you look at that, Walt has arrived. Well, first of all, let's get everyone selected and uh, get everyone moving on over here. And then, of course, we're going to ask very nicely for Jonathan to attack Walt and Edith and Lillian. You are going to do the same. Oh, there we go. The first shot. And it looks like he is from the Faithful Sons of England, a neutral faction that might not be neutral forever. He is wearing armor and he is very forgiving of these attacks. Perhaps he thinks it's, uh, you know, a mistake or something like that. This could well be a mistake. <laughs> a few more strikes should be enough to do it. Walt, I'm so sorry. You came to the wrong neighborhood, my friend. Jonathan is lining up his shot. Lillian and Edith are stabbing away. A miss. Oh, a strike. And he's now hostile. So I think he might just start fighting back. Edith with the kill. Thank you, Edith. And now look at this. All of these trade goods. Armor too. Wonderful. Right, well, you all can rest. And it looks like Edith is getting straight into their armor. Well earned, I think. Well earned. Jonathan, I love your cap there, mate. I wonder, are you going to get this lad butchered? Perhaps after finishing the flooring. Oh, you know what? We probably have to have a look here. Yes, there we go. Now, if we reset Jonathan. Ah, getting resource. Yep, we are going to go and butcher poor Walt here and get a whole heap of meat from this. Now, once we actually are able to eat the meat, we're going to get some really nice bonuses from that. And I'd say that's the end of a very good day four. Oh, would you look at that? He was actually carrying some traps. We're going to go and install these just by these two doors. Eventually, this whole area is going to be covered with traps. But yet again, we don't need to worry about that just yet. All right, well, he's getting to it. Let's see what we got. Well, a whole heap of raw human meat that hopefully Jonathan will get cooked up for us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What a wonderful meal indeed. Junket pile. Oh, and we have roasted human meat. Lovely. Well, I say lovely in the context of this series, okay? Oh, look at that. A bonus from killing someone, Edith. <laughs> now, these might seem like good bonuses, but they are going to be heavily outweighed by the bonuses that we get once we actually start eating that meat there. It looks like we are going for this first, though. Just this regular roasted meat, just because it's a little bit closer to going off. But I'm sure once they have the chance, they'll consume and we can actually kind of control that here right now they have a general diet all foods we can swap that onto just cannibal for the time being so that we can get them to have those nice bonuses so while this space here will be our main dining hall for the time being it might be a little bit of everything we do need to chuck down a basic research table this is definitely not going to be its final home but for the time being I think it's gonna work just okay inside here. I do envision the main library kind of being more off to the side here. And it looks like we might not actually have all the wood that we need, so let's go and designate a few of these trees to be chopped down. 
And Jonathan is getting straight to it. Yet again, the end of another day. Day six. We've nearly been here for a week. And we are making progress. Ah, excellent. There we go. Consumed human flesh. Now, I believe there is a way for that to stack. And also, you know what? Maybe we do need to kind of convince them to eat the raw stuff as well. Because believe me, when it's raw, the bonuses are uh, good, to say the least. For now, though, for the interest of safety, maybe we allow Jonathan to continue cooking it. Well, we had to move our basic research table, but we are getting that in place now. And of course, that will allow us to start researching things. Beginning with architecture, of course. Which we can unlock right away because we have the necessary chronicles to do so. Oh, and a new settler. I see. Warren claimed that he was running from a pack of enraged philosophers. Interesting. They had beaten him up for reductive reasoning and epistemological skepticism. I don't know what they were talking about, but they wouldn't let up. Would you offer him a place to stay? There may be repercussions. So, Warren. Hmm. We'll let him in. You know, let's have a look and see. Okay, so Warren, you are injured, correct? And here's the moment of truth, my friend. Do you have it? No, you don't. Listless, winsome, and a gobbler. Warren. Well, unfortunately, my friend, I don't think you're long for this world. Now, because he is considered to be actually part of the colony now, if he does die, people will be upset. But in saying that, I think what Warren can provide in terms of nutrition will make up for that. However, we don't want to kill him before the search party arrives. As, well, if they arrive and there's no Warren here, they've got no reason to attack us. We want them to stick around so that we, of course, can get some bodies. So for now, we will allow Warren to eat our precious resources and rest. We'll probably try not to tend you? Yeah. I'll keep an eye on the wound. Oh yeah, no, his hit points are going up. He's gonna be fine. Right, but we did unlock some research, didn't we? A wooden beam, which is going to allow us to make wider halls, and we probably are going to want to widen things out here a fair bit. And you know what? Even this space here, uh, it's gonna be our main dining hall. We want it to be impressive, so I think we'll probably push these bedrooms back a bit. In saying that, we're not going to focus on anything else until we have our root cellar built, which is going to be just under this kitchen area here. Oh, well, this is nice. Together we are strong. We actually did get a uh, bonus to allowing Warren to join us. Uh, yet again, I feel like that will outweigh the negative that will come from us eventually killing him. And yeah, that's what we're going to be doing to anyone that does try to join our colony that isn't of our belief. I mean, how else are you meant to become immortals that consume the flesh of the living. We're going to make sure that everyone else can have a rest. Warren, you, well, will lie on the ground. Jonathan, I'm not sure how you got injured. Yeah, not sure. Well, be careful. <laughs> oh, and I should also note that it was the end of day six. We're now on day seven. As of tomorrow, it has been a whole week, and what a week it's been for Hexham so far. And you know, we're not against using Warren for a little bit of labor. I mean, we're not looking too hungrily at him yet. Fantastic, our last little bit there has been dug out. So we're going to chuck down a limestone staircase. And it's gonna go right down there. We might need to mine out this block too. Why, thank you, Jonathan. That stair is getting put in place and now they can start working on digging out our root cellar finally. Ah, and here they are, the violent extortionists, the philosophers of the natural order. Some wore beards, others wore spectacles, all of them wore scowls. The philosophers of the natural order approached, fragrant with the scent of parchment and sealing wax. Hud over Warren, said the eldest, pointing a long, ink-stained finger. We have a score to settle. Ah, see? that's what we're going to go with. We are not going to bow to these philosophers. We have our school of thought too, don't we? Standing our ground, we refuse to give into their demands. Warren is our meal. We take up arms, making ready for battle, and uh, here they are all the way up here. We have Aomer, Harold, Aldebert, Harnold, and 
Senegalis. And they are beginning their attack, and they're starting all the way over here. So they do have a ways to go before they reach our home. And I think, for now, we're probably just going to defend up here. But we don't really need to worry about stopping just yet. Well, we are getting into position here. Looks like they're going to be causing a little bit of havoc for us. Harnold is going to get shot here, hopefully. Lilian, you are going to be guarding the front here. So let's hope that you're going to be able to hold that just fine. So far, it's looking pretty good for us. Oh, fantastic strike there, Lilian. Excellent. First of them is dead. Aoma, looks like you might be next. Oh, there's another way up. Well, that is unfortunate, but they still need to make their way up towards us. Let's get into a line here, folks, and see if this is going to work. Warren, we are going to get you fighting as well. You might not have a weapon. Actually, let's see if we can get you to equip that. There we go. All right. Now let's get to fighting. Oh, another down. Excellent. Looks like Warren's just using his hands now. Well, Eomer is nearly out. Same thing with Sin over here. Excellent. Edith, a little hurt. But altogether, I think this fight is going pretty well for us. There we go. Victory. Fantastic. Four sworn enemies died. Edith Danvers was the bravest of the settlers, dealing the most blows to our foes. And Warren took the most damage. Okay, well, we do actually have one left over here. Let's see if we can still take Aldebart out. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be fleeing just yet. Jonathan, unfortunately, taking a hit there. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to chase you down. It's going to be a lot of chasing for a long while. So instead, Warren... I'm sorry, but your time has come. Yep, so we just need you to hang out there for us, please. And uh, we are going to uh, make this as painless as possible. Now, Warren, <laughs> let's see how much that actually ended up affecting us. Let's see here. Ah, a friend died. Minus 10. Unfortunate. But we'll be able to make up with that with all the bonuses that we're going to get. And we're going to be able to keep these uh, remains for a little while, I think. However, for the time being, we need to rest, I believe. Grab what you need to. Lelion, we're going to set you to number one priority when it comes to tending. And we'll see if we actually do need to tend here. That's a nice looking helmet. Well, actually, no, it's not. The, the armor rating's terrible, but better than nothing. Well, these two are calling it a night. We didn't really get to see how much was going on in here today, but they have been doing a good job at uh, chipping away at our root cellar. Jeez, with that, we are now <laughs> in a new week, and they're starving currently because, well, Jonathan's been a little busy. Eat your meat, go to sleep. Ah, and there we go. That's the bonus that I was looking for. Eating this flesh imbues sacred power, so should the druids of yore. And that's from eating raw human flesh. So plus eight, pretty good. And I believe that will stack over time as well. Oh yeah, Jonathan, that's a, that's a fair bit of food. Okay, well, we need to get that inside underground so it's nice and cool. And now it could be worth waiting until this area is clear. But I think we need to at least get some of it down here if we can. Unfortunately, there's a lot of limestone we need to get rid of. Okay, as you can see, we do have our meat down here. Now, it should be able to um, last a while longer. It's going to rot in about a week's time. And it's rotting because of the temperature. Actually, it's, yeah, it's, it's 4.5 degrees down here. So that's definitely better. <laughs> Well, it looks like we've nearly got this sorted. I am just noticing that Edith does still have a wound. That needs to be treated. Wow, killed someone three times. Edith, <laughs> that's excellent. That's that's definitely helping with your mood. Now, Lillian, let's please go tend those wounds. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, that is the last of the root cellar done. Now, we just need to get all that limestone out of here. Obviously, we are going to expand this out. And once we can, we will be putting shelving in there too. So in here, we're going to have a look at getting our butcher's table put in, along with the campfire, some nice stools, and in the corner, we're going to have a stone brazier. I'm hoping that the temperature isn't going to affect the root cellar below, which is staying nice and cold. We've got 3.8 degrees in there at the moment. I imagine it might get even colder if we go lower. I suppose we will see. And out here, we're going to be putting in these wooden beams so we can expand this main hall out further. And these are going to be our bedrooms. 
Okay, so 20 degrees in here now, a much more comfortable temperature. And down below, we are looking at 5.5. So it might have risen it slightly, but I think this still works out okay for us. I think we'll probably choose to just keep some of these doors open as well. Oh boy, okay, well, <laughs> Luna's given birth to Duchess and Jisper. We've got two more goats. Good to know, I suppose. We really haven't been focusing on them, but... <laughs> Construction here is going okay. We've got our kitchen coming together slowly but surely here, and we are expanding out our main living space. And slowly but surely, our dining room is beginning to rise. Pretty much everything that we make is going to be out of stone, well, specifically limestone at this stage, and it's gonna be messy for a little while. And because I think we're going to need it, we are expanding out our storehouse, finally. We have some backgammon. <laughs> Edith, unfortunately, is still working. She's unhappy. She hasn't had a chance to take a break for a little while. We have had no leisure this entire time, but finally we can sit down among all the stone that we've been shipping out here and take a moment. Ah, there we go. Edith finally gets a break, just as Lelion is heading off to get back to mining. In well, actual fact, no, Lilion is just hauling, doing so, so much hauling for us. There's a lot of limestone in there. We need to get most of it out the way just because, uh, yeah, as you can see, there's a whole heap. Now, once we've got this section here, dug out that's going to be all the mining that we do on this level for a while we're going to set up a temporary library in here and then the next set of mining is going to be up here what that will allow us to do is have a little bit of a walkway around this area here oh a misfire on the trap yeah that's something that we need to probably watch out for we are going to be digging out this whole space as well but it'll take us a little bit to get to that point ah and summer is here it appears like a warm blessing, coaxing the settlers to shed their warm clothing. Now was the time to build underground storage to keep food fresh in the sunny days to come. Yes, and something that I am going to need to keep in mind is that we are actually still going to need to drink stuff. Yes, we can consume human flesh, but the blood will not sustain us, unfortunately. Yes, so we are going to need to look at getting into brewing at some point soon. That means we're going to need to sacrifice a little bit of time to do a little bit of research. So Lilion, we're probably gonna get you to have a look at that with an intellectual of 22. Let's get you working on some chronicles for us. And while we are still working away here, we've managed to unlock a fermentation station, which we are going to drop into our kitchen here. And there we have it. We can make curdling milk, which I'm sure would be delicious and fermenting fruit juice. We're gonna set them both onto forever so that when we have some of the resources, we will look at processing them. Well, it's official. One of our first bedrooms is uh, fully mined out. It's still a ways off being completed, but it's a damn good start. And that, Legionnaires, is where I'm going to be leaving us for this first episode. From the outside, the Cannibal Keep looks like nothing more than just a barn, but beneath the surface, lurks something sinister. Will the choices we've made today doom us or lead us to enlightenment? For these three would-be immortal beings, that remains to be seen. So for now, I ask you all, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, Stay tuned. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon who continue to make content like this possible. If you too would like to join the Legion and support this channel, please do check out the Patreon link in the description.